Welcome to our film, Forever Fixings. With me today is John Muir from Construction Fixings Association. Good morning, John. Good morning, great to be here. So can you tell us about post-drill fixings and why they're important? Post-drill fixings are the most appropriate and flexible method of connecting fixtures to existing structures. The fixing's ability to take high loads also makes it very suitable for safety critical applications. And as such, they have to work effectively. Where poor selection, design or insulation procedures have been used, the anchor may not work effectively and indeed it may fail. This would consider to be so important that Bridge Owners Forum of the UK decided to engage Syria to produce a guide on post-drilled fixings. The author of the guide was Marco Stacey and he produced a detailed study on post-drilled fixings following concerns from the asset owners. So what sort of fixings are covered here? Fixings in rail, highways, gantries, tunnels, anything that's deemed to be safety critical or highly loaded fixings. And I expect they have to be able to perform for a very long time. They have to perform for a long time and they have to be maintainable. So for someone installing these types of post-drill fixings, they're constantly thinking about the safety critical work that they're doing. Absolutely. The last thing you want is a failure. In fact, in Boston Big Dig and the Soga Tunnel in Japan, they come to mind as examples. But also in the UK as well. There was a tower crane collapse in Liverpool where the post and drill fixings became loose and it came down. And the estimations found that anything go wrong at any time in any application. The essence is to ensure good design, good detailing and good workmanship and that's universal. I imagine it's also down to simple behaviours, encouraging teams to stop and think. Yes, they have to consider what effect what you're doing now will have in five years' time. And if this was a major accident at, say, a train station? Well, potentially it could create widespread disruption of the whole network. Ultimately then, what we do on site today matters for years to come. Yes, that's why we have BS Code of Practice 8539, we have the European Technical Assessment System, and ultimately that's what led to the publishing of the Syria Guide. And what is the key theme of the guide? Well, it's looking at allowing individuals to consider everything from design stage through to insulation stage and beyond into the through life. And it's the through life management that matters most? Yes, but that only matters if the design is good, an ETA approved anchor is used and the execution meets the design intent. What are the important design features? Post installed fixings in tension, particularly with the highly loaded, are most susceptible to load reduction through poor workmanship. So it's therefore wise to introduce a degree of redundancy to the system. Either one fixing would fail, the other, load, the other fixings take that shared load. Tension can be applied, but with care. And it's important to allow for inspection of the fixings and nothing is hidden. Can we illustrate that? Yes, uh, it's a Soga tunnel. No defects were determined until the whole thing collapsed. And there were many fatalities there. Yes, but to take a counterpoint to that, in Crossrail, they've introduced a secondary fixing for each component. So should the primary fixings fail, those components won't come down into public areas. Designers are focused on that. Construction is built under pressure. How much of a problem is that? But we have to accept that there are pressures in construction. What we have to realise is we're looking at safe, something safety critical long term. We all understand safety on a day to day basis where everyone goes home safely at night. But in this case, we have to look at safety critical fixings, which means we have to ensure safety for the travelling public and for people using the buildings that we are constructing. That has to be for today, for 50 years, and perhaps even for 100 years. Well, that's a big responsibility. Now, we have a list of top things to watch out for on site. Clean bolts, properly stored, cleaned after storage. Correct bolts, checked against spec and nuts and all other components. Drilled holes are square to the surface, not at an angle, and set out to avoid the rebar. But if you do encounter rebar, stop and get your supervisor to consult the designer. Holes have correct roughness. Competent installed and checker. Proof tests to be to CFA approved tester scheme. That's a comprehensive list. We must always count on experienced and trained teams as well. The leading manufacturers provide training and certification. Well, that's a lot to remember. What happens if you're doing this for the first time on a project? Well, it's a good point, but you can't rely on experience alone. It's important to bring in the manufacturer and supplier to assist in developing an installation plan, providing training on the specific product, and working with installers on the initial installation. 
So even if it is going to cost extra pounds, it's well worth the while. Yes, and it's also worth introducing a programme of proof testing to make sure everything's going to plan. It seems to me that it's all about teamwork. Everyone wants the same thing, a quality job properly delivered. I agree. And if there's an unsure or can't follow the plan, don't risk it or take chances. Get the engineer involved and get a properly executed engineering plan. Giving it an extra hour or two or even an extra day or two is time well spent when there's a potential issue. The cost of a latent error is greater than the contract itself. And if an anchor fails, it could cause a fatality, which is immeasurable. Thanks so much, John. Let's go to the lab and see a post-fix install in action. We're going to look at why it's vital to form a hole correctly and blow it out before any installation. The first test is for a resin fixing with a hole which has not been blown out. This means that there's dust in the hole. The load in this instance builds up but only reaches 27.3 kilonewtons. That's when the fixing starts to pull out and the fixing has failed. Now let's look at diamond coring. The first problem with diamond coring is it cuts through the rebar and that is generally not allowed. The second problem is the hole is very smooth, glassy smooth, and there's very little bond for the resin. We see that the failure load is just under 24. That's even less than for the dusty hole. Now these loads might be enough to work short term to get it to stand up for now, but think ahead. In the future, wind loads will come on. Floor structures get crowded with people. Things like shrinkage forces need to be considered. So let's have a look at the same fixing correctly installed. Now we're seeing a failure load of 98 kilonewtons, almost four times what we had before. This is more like it. Now we are meeting the full design capacity which allows for those future loads. Okay, thank you for your guidance and support, John. Pleasure. As you've seen, these incidents like in Liverpool and Boston are rare, but you can never be too careful. Designers need to make sure the designs are robust. When out on site, follow the method statement, inspection and test plan. Have the work independently checked because the site and the pressures surrounding it may be in the present, but any fixings installed need to be permanent for the future. There's no excuse for anything less than forever fixings, and they may well need to last a lot longer than your own lifetime.